personal. This is Tara. Today I am working on 30 Days of Sketches with Christie's Beautiful Life, Series 13, Day Number 18. I am also combining it with my Counterfeit Kit Challenge blog, Challenge Number 2. This month, Master Forger Leslie has taken over the blog and has picked a beautiful kit. I will have all that information listed below, including the link to the Counterfeit Kit Challenge blog, so that if you want to play along with us, you can. We have a Facebook community group where we share our kits and the projects that we make from them. We also put out two challenges each month. We have a followers um, post each month where we pick a follower and we highlight her or his. We, I don't think we've had any guys come on but or his if we have somebody show up um projects and kits that they created it's a fun group we enjoy what we do and that being said i pulled in of course my counterfeit kit for october i had this beautiful 49 and market paper from art options elena it is gorgeous i Pulled out some of the laser cut flowers, leaves, heart, butterflies, and a couple of little tiny hearts. These are from Simple Stories. Plus, I have some Simple Stories enamel dots, which I may not use because I have these glitter drops from Nuvo that match really well that I thought I might use. I pulled in some flowers from my kit. Um, some letters from my kit and because my challenge for challenge number two is to create a title um, with a quote or use a quote for your title is a better way to say it I brought in some smaller letters so I will probably use one large letter from one large word from the letters and then the smaller letters to create the rest of the quote so those were not actually in my kit, but in my stash. And if you buy a kit, you would add from your stash. And we at CKCB don't care if you add to from your stash. I also pulled in two craft colored doilies from my stash. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we're going to get started. Oh, these pictures are of my beautiful oldest daughter and her wonderful husband, Dre. They had some... Basically some anniversary photos taken. They never had wedding photos, so they had got a series of photos taken for their anniversary, and they're beautiful. This is only four of them. So I'm going to be using three of those photos on this layout. I haven't decided which of the four I will use, but we'll make that decision here in a little bit as well. I'll be right back. I also forgot to mention the um, sketch for today. It was created by... Deb Talbrod. It this is for day 18. This is, has three photos on it and it has um some elements here, here, and then around the photos. And so I'm gonna have to make some pretty big decisions on what I'm doing with this, but um we'll get it. Alright, very bad. Alright, one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some stenciling to this beautiful pattern paper. I chose the Broken Heart stencil from Vicki Booten's print shop collection. This is a really cool stencil and it is kind of fun to play with and I feel like I haven't played with it enough. So I'm just gonna add some of these hearts on this background. It's gonna be very subtle because I'm trying to go with colors that are already on the pattern paper. What I really wanted to play with was some texture paste, but I didn't have the time to allow it to dry. So I'm just gonna use the inking. And this is just a, another way to, to oomph up, for lack of better terminology, your pattern paper. Not that 49 and Market's paper needs to be oomphed up because their paper is stunning. Almost every sheet I've ever seen has been absolutely stunning. So I'm just gonna put, the stenciling in about three places on here and then um, I'm going to bring in my um, hello kitty my uh, my cardstock that goes in the envelope where I keep this stencil and I've mentioned this several times before in videos I'm currently reorganizing my small stencils and I'm putting them in Avery L type envelopes with a piece of white cardstock 
and I will put that in. I have a little um, organizer to my right where all of the small stencils will fit. So that's what that's about. So these doilies are probably from Recollections, one of those really cheap packs that they used to have all the time. I'm not sure um, if Michael still has those cheap packs available anymore. I, to be honest, haven't looked lately because yours truly bought a humongous stack of doilies from Amazon and I'll never need them again. These are my last two of these craft doilies and I bought doily dies to use with my Switch or Big Shot, whichever I'm playing with at the moment, to create any color of doily I want. So I won't be buying any more. I'll just be buying the cardstock instead. Um, I chose three of the photos that I printed out. I chose all of the portrait um, mode style photos, and I'm going to layer them up in the center. So what I've kind of done here is I've flopped the background of um, her sketch and I'm using the elements on that pattern paper top and bottom to recreate what looked like half circles in the corners and then rather than flop the doilies the, the center circles those are going to end up exactly where they are on the sketch. Okay so up to this point what you saw me doing was setting up a second sheet of the pattern paper from this collection to use as matting. But first I had to trim off the beautiful floral element because I'm saving that for another sketch in the series. Um, but it wasn't important that it stayed attached to a single sheet of pa pattern paper. I definitely needed some um, color to mat with. And the back side of each of these papers are um, a, a lovely looking almost mixed media type background which is usual which is very normal for 49 and Mar market papers but it, it gives you two tones for the papers and you'll see here in a minute that I will come in with the other side of that pattern paper and I'll flip it over to make a larger mat for my photos so I have already distressed all of my photos and now I'm distressing the little mats on my photos and I love to do that. It creates a beautiful texture. 49 and market papers are perfect for distressing. They're thick enough and they just distress so well. I adore them. They're my absolute favorite papers to play with when distressing. They just distress the best. Anyway, so I'm going to distress the mats for all three of these photos, just like I distressed each photo. And then I'm going to bring in the back side of that same piece of pattern paper you can see there it's the same and i'm going to layer up my photos but i'm going to layer them all up wonky they're not going to go on there straight i am just kind of creating up some visual interest for you with the way that i put out my photos and on the sketch you saw that she kind of had them going in a diagonal line so this is my nod to her diagonal line but yet still keeping them in a straight line across and so you can see I'm just trimming off what I don't need and I'm going to go ahead and distress the larger mat as well. So you will also notice that I'm going to use those craft doilies but I'm putting them in a lot closer than the sketch appears to have on um, that sketch. So they're just going to be kind of peeking out from my embellishments and my photo mat. Now I am going to be using some fun foam on the back of my photo mat just to, to give a little bit more texture to this layout. I also like to do this because if I'm tucking stuff underneath a photo, it really allows me to do this and using the wet glue side allows me to move things around before it dries. I am using a quick dry glue, but there's still enough time as you can see. I am able to move those doilies into position in a better manner so that they look more like Deb's sketch. And now I'm going to dump out this little baggie of flowers. I keep my Prima style flowers 
in Ziploc baggies and then they're in a black photo box on the Calyx shelves behind me. And that keeps them very organized. And if I know I need a certain color, I can just grab that baggie and, you know, use it and then it can be put away very easily. This is the best way that I have found for me to organize flowers. So, and that idea came from Janet Madison over at RTS Scrapbooking. You can find her channel here on YouTube. She's amazing. You should check her out. Anyway, so I'm just kind of layering up some flowers here and there on either side of the photo mat. I'm just kind of sticking with that diagonal line. And again, this is my nod to, I said I flipped this sketch so that the design elements are in the opposite corners than they are on the sketch. And this is my nod to um, the diagonal portion as well. I'm using those doilies as kind of a base for an embellishment cluster on either side of that photo mat. I did create a third one on the bottom right with that heart laser die cut and a couple of more flowers. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm gonna put one of the words from the quote um, using the little tiny letters and my foam tape. And this is how I pop up and attempt to keep my letters in line perfectly. It's not perfect, you'll see. But I'm only gonna do one of these on camera. So as I mentioned, I only did one of the words from the quote up in on camera on the fun foam because I knew that it would take forever for me to do that and it would make this video ridiculously long so I cut off the camera and finished doing the quote. This quote came from Pinterest. It's saved on a board that I had um, for quotes and most of the quotes are for fun but this one is a really pretty quote and it will serve as my journaling as well as my title for this layout. You know that I'm a stickler for journaling, but I really feel like with this long quote um, slash title plus adding the date and Courtney Andre's name down at the bottom, I've covered my um, requirement for journaling well. Um, on the back of it, I will probably write that they are anniversary photos. Um, and I'll also stick the quote on the back because I printed it out from Pinterest and it has the author's name, which I'm not placing on the front of this layout. So what I'm doing here is I'm peeling off the back of the foam tape and getting the words to this um, quote down onto my layout and it says fall in love with someone who is both your safe place and your biggest adventure and as a mom this is something that i wish for all of my children that when they find their life partner that they choose somebody who is a safe place and also somebody that is a big adventure i have had that in my marriage and i want that for each of my children that's just a side note. So I'm going to use these burlap letters to make the word adventure. And I'm only using the uppercase letters. Um, about here at the T, I had wished I'd changed and used uppercase and lower, but it's fine. And I am going to be picking up those letters and moving them over to the right here just a little bit because I didn't like how long this word was um, and it's dragged out well past where I wanted it to end. These um, thickers are the type that they do have adhesive on the back, but they are the type that you do have to go back in and glue down. And I'll do that off camera. You won't see me do it here. And I'm just kind of getting the title as straight as I possibly can without using a ruler because you know me, I'm bad about picking up the ruler. It's even handy. I could reach up and grab it, but I don't. Anyway, I get them on there and I'm quite happy with that. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Courtney's name and the date on here. Um, Courtney is my oldest daughter. She is our third child. And this is her with her husband on their anniversary this past September. 
and these are beautiful photos and I think I have eight or nine of them that I can print out and I only used three for this layout. So I'm just putting Courtney and Dre's names down here in the bottom left corner. I am going to put the date up near that right photo and it's just going to be 2023. I'm not actually going to put the month on here, but um, like I said on the back, I will probably write that these are anniversary photos from September 2023 and it's um, going to be enough and then plus tape that photo that I printed out of the full quote. I did put the full quote on the layout, but I did not put the author's name on the front of my layout. I just didn't feel like it fit anywhere well. And so I, I will give the nod to the author of the quote on the back of my layout. As I finish up putting the date on this layout, I am going to be cutting down a piece of packaging and I am going to cover my photos with it so I can put some white splatters on this layout. I love adding splatters and 49 and Market has what looks like white splatters already on here. So I love adding more just to give a little bit more visual texture to this layout. It also helps um, your eyes focus on the photos, which of course is the point of this layout is to help you help draw your eyes towards my beautiful daughter and her husband in these photos. And that is pretty much all that I will do with this layout. Oh, except for I am going to come in and add those Nouveau drops. And you're going to get to say, see me make and fix a big boo-boo with the Nouveau drops. Thankfully, it is easy to do that when you have Nouveau drops and they're still wet. Now, up here, right here, it kind of bops and it makes too big of a dot. And so I'm going to wipe it off with my fingers. And then I will re-put a smaller a dot on there and this happened because I don't have them in their place. They actually are stored upside down but I took them to We Create in September and I've never bothered to put them away. I've been trying to use them before putting them away and I hadn't pulled these out and used them yet but if they were had been stored in the storage containers that I got from scrapbook.com they would have been upside down and there wouldn't have been an air bubble and I wouldn't have gotten a weird whoop on my layout like I did. Don't you love my great terminology? Blah. So I finished with the peachy color and decided that I needed a little bit more of the blue color and I'm going to go ahead and add a few more little dots of the blue before finishing up here. Quite happy with this. Okay I got this layout completely finished. Again, this layout is for both CKCB and for 30 Days of Sketches. I was assigned challenge number two for CKCB, which was to use a quote as a title. I chose this quote by Blanca Sparacino, and I will probably um, attach that to the back of this layout so that we know where it came from or who said it, because I didn't put that person's name on my layout. And this is going to be one of those layouts that I do not journal on. Why? Because my title has enough of, it tells the story. It also has their names on it and the year. And so for me, that is absolutely enough. Could I journal on it? Absolutely. And I may, after that, those Nouveau drops and the white splatters completely dry, I may put that these are their anniversary photos on the back, but I don't feel like I have to. Also, pretty sure that this layout is gonna end up in a frame. I have some 12 by 12 frames that I got from Ikea, and I've been filling them with layouts, especially the layouts that I have doubles of, because yeah, that happens. And that happens a lot, as a matter of fact, a lot more than I'd care to admit. But I want to thank you so much for coming to my channel today. I really appreciate those of you who take the time to like, comment, and or subscribe. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Just click that 
button down below and if you want to be notified there's a bell there too you can click that and youtube will notify you when i put out new content i strive for two to four videos per week for the month of october i am putting out daily content because i am trying to participate in 30 days of sketches and we are over halfway through the month so I feel like rather than just trying, I'm kind of succeeding despite all of the crazy that has happened this month in my family. I'm still hanging on by a thread. Anyway, thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.